Well, so I wanted to highlight some moral choices uh, religious and secular people make for quite a while now, because well, morality is this big subject that can come up in their conversations. Even people who are not really involved into this debate between religious people and atheists often have this image that religious people are inherently more moral. So I also wanted to share how I think it might be productive to approach this topic with not only religious people but also with people who don't have a religion and even with people who are against religion like myself. <clears throat> So I want to first start with this idea that people try to find reasons to justify what they desire to do. Or the idea of do first, think later. This effect is shown to be robust in various settings by modern psychology. And I find it a very useful question to ask when I see people do things. Are people doing things because they plan to do it to achieve a goal? Or doing something is an end in itself for them? but they would prefer to be able to give a reason when they are asked. So let me give you an example. We can imagine a person that was abused by their religious parents. Maybe they took the Bible in its literal meaning and didn't spare any rods. And so their child hated the religion growing up. For that child, being angry at the religion that they are raised can be an end in itself, while being an atheist can be just a rationalization for them to be angry. Or as I'm trying to emphasize that merely a mean to reach that end. Of course it doesn't have to be something as obvious as this. The point I'm making is there's a large portion of our brain that is not under rational control yet exert influences over us. This is again made pretty clear by modern psychology. Sometimes it's something really silly, like I used to hate paying to park my bike in Japan, and I came up with all sorts of excuses to not pay it. Because, like, by not using cars, I'm reducing carbon emission. So I should be encouraged to use my bike more often. So I... <laughs> I still think parking my bike should be free, but how it should be done has nothing to do with whether I should pay my parking fees or not right now, right? Now with that in mind, let's consider how this might affect the choices of religious people and non-religious people in certain cases. Here are several cases from my actual experiences. So once I had a conversation with some evangelical missionaries and we talked about how do you know which religion, which church is the right one, considering there are many church with beliefs that are mutually incompatible with one another. One answer she gave was, you have to go to those churches and see whether people have really changed. There are many churches in which people claim to be Christians, but they didn't really change. The only problem? We were talking about the Mormons. Unlike me, she never visited an LDS church. So to believe her church is the best, she is willing to believe other churches are inferior without any actual understanding. Everything she learned about the Mormons, she learned from people in her church. Now here's another case, the one over free will, sin and punishment. This is this weird belief that Christians have, is that we have the ability to choose and when we do something wrong we ought to be punished. The uh, purpose of such punishment being to discourage us from doing the wrong thing again, to be fair or something. <laughs> Of course, there are certain Christians also believe punishment in itself can be an end, being the eternal hellfire or the outer darkness if you're a Latter-day Saint. So when I take a step back and examine these beliefs as an atheist with all my secular knowledge, I can't help but notice how harmful these ideas can be if their respective religion is wrong. As I mentioned previously, we know people are not in full control of the actions they take. I mean, that's why the whole advertisement industry exists, isn't it? It's to manipulate you into buying stuff you may or may not need. There's times that we just want to do certain things. We don't really mean it, even when we are trying to find excuses to justify what we wanted to do in the first place. It's human nature, and this is a very powerful knowledge because it enables us to forgive people for what they did and focus on what we can do 
to help. We can find out how to help people from their nature with the power of science. Back to the things we do. There are things that we are not in total control or things we are in less control of. And there are things that we are in more control of. So here's how the whole punishing people for their crime thing puzzles me. Because if people are in control of what they do, yet they choose to do it, why not just explain to them why they shouldn't do that wrong thing and just convince them to not do the wrong thing. If people are not in control of what they do, why punishment? Why why punish them for something they are not in control of? How is that fair? Now with those reasonings, let's consider how a religious person might reconcile their belief to make it feel fair for them. They might believe people are in control of things they aren't, case in point gay sex. And really, a lot of other things too, or when we are gathering more and more evidence on how environment and situation might affect people's behavior. Look up the Miller experiment if you haven't done so already. And sometimes they de-emphasize the power of God and emphasize what people can do. For example, to justify God not being patient and explain why things are wrong to do and convince people to not to do wrong things, they might find faults on other people. This is like when you are praying for something, like for God to reveal that the well, Book of Mormon is truly the Word of God, and or to help your friend who is suffering from ser serious illnesses to get better. If prayer is an answer, well, maybe you aren't patient or faithful enough. God can be wrong, so it must be something wrong with you. As you can see, when people are insisting to hold on their belief that God is perfect, they have this tendency to blame people for, well, who might as well be innocent. I know this video is getting really long, but here's just one more example I want to get it out. Uh, it's just how it irritates me when I hear people tell me how their religion has worked for them, uh, how it has made them a better person. It's because that's not what I wanted to accept when I'm against religion, because it detracts, it makes me feel less justified in doing what I do. But it would be wrong for me to ignore reality so my position could be more justified, right? That would be treating the action of being against religion as an end in itself, which is not the case. And by ignoring people's experiences, I've not just hurt their feelings, but I close the door to investigating how did religion help people which could be a very meaningful question to ask in this case, because we can learn how to help people, right? And by doing so, I, so I place myself further from reality and further from the truth. Um, so here's how I want to end this video. If someone presupposes God is fair and just, and is willing to overlook or dismiss any evidence to the contrary, there's really no point in having this conversation at all. We should be having some other conversation, like how did you know God is fair and just? And, that stuff. But if your goal is to be kind to other people and help them to live a better life, a happy life, well these cases I just discussed seems to have some value no matter you're an atheist or you're religious or you're some, anything in between. I hope you find this video helpful. If you have any suggestions or maybe I did something wrong, please leave it in the comments and I'll respond. Thanks for watching this video and bye bye.